Welcome to the demonstration on the new proof of concept bi-directional integration between ServiceNow and Jira through Jira's latest Rust-based API. A few years ago, Atlassian announced that it was deprecating the SOAP web service API for its Jira product. As prior ServiceNow integrations with Jira have used that API, this demo shows how we can easily integrate to Jira through the REST API, just as we did with the former SOAP interface. Out of the box, this integration fulfills a scenario where there are two groups working tickets. One group is in the ServiceNow tool, and the other group is in the Jira tool. The ServiceNow group creates a ticket that they know will be a Jira issue to be worked on by somebody in the secondary team. Once a ticket is created in ServiceNow, a corresponding ticket is created in Jira. Comments can be exchanged between the two systems, and status changes can also occur between ServiceNow and the Jira consoles. We'll now demonstrate the basic flow of the integration between the ServiceNow incident records and their corresponding connection to the Jira issues. First, we're going to create a new incident, and we're going to give the category to be Jira issue, and, and we have a number of subcategories. These are issue types in Jira. We're going to select bug, and then we're going to give ourselves a short description. Uh, the fonts are to bug on the resource, bars. Now we're going to misspell bug big as bug on purpose here. And then we're going to just say, you know, they reach the top of the div borders. We need to uh, shrink, shrink them down to look more natural. Okay, let's go ahead and submit that. All right, now we're going to send a web service request to Jira to create that uh, on the Jira. Once it's created, we can scroll down into our incident and we can see the, con the response back from Jira. The, the ins issue number, etc. Also, uh, we'll get a new button on our incident form that says View Jira Record. Now, if we're to click that button, it will pop up a window, a browser window, with the Jira issue inside of it. If we're logged in, we'll be able to edit it and such. Uh, if we're not, we'll just be able to view it, just depending on the on the rights. But let's uh, go ahead and fix that. Um, the misspelling of, of big when we typed it as bug. So we'll just hit edit here and we will change bug to big and we will save that. And next we're going to put a comment here. Uh, we're going to ask the ServiceNow uh, service desk techni technician. Um, we'll tell them this is being looked at by our team. But we also want to know what browser they see this problem as. Okay. Now if we switch back to ServiceNow and we refresh the form. Now please bear in mind that uh, the way we have this set up is it is um, a, a poll scenario, meaning every minute or so, which is configurable, we're going to request for updates from the the Jira system. So it looks like our our comment is there, as is our uh, short description change from uh, bug to big. We're going to comment back and say this is happening in Internet Explorer. And we'll submit that comment. As you can see, our new comment has been added to the Jira ticket. We're going to go ahead and resolve the issue. And we're going to say that uh, this was fixed in today's build, and uh, we're going to test it out. Now we're going to refresh our incident ticket inside of ServiceNow. I will give it a minute or two before we do that. And as you'll notice here, the state is resolved, and our comment uh, has been entered into the journal field section. Okay, now we're going to respond back uh, to that resolution. But this is still actually happening on a specific version of IE. And then we will submit that comment. Okay, we'll go ahead and refresh the JIRA issue. And we will uh, notice that it has been reopened. And that our comment uh, there at the bottom says that it's still happening on IE 7. So now let's go and we'll resolve the issue once again. And this time we're going to say that, uh, okay, uh, we found the issue. 
go ahead and try it again, uh, this time in IA7. Okay, we'll now switch to our ServiceNow ticket and we'll reload the form after a minute or so. We see the resolution, we see uh, the comment to try it again. So let's say we tried it and it worked this time. So we're going to go ahead and uh, make a comment that it looks good and we're going to close the ticket. Now if we switch back over to the JIRA ticket and refresh it, we'll see that the ticket has now been closed. Now let's take a moment to cover the overall integration architecture for this proof of concept integration between ServiceNow and JIRA. The integration has a number of components that allow us to benefit from bidirectional integration with JIRA. As the incident table is the heart of this integration, we have a number of business rules watching it for certain events taking place on the incident form. When those events are triggered, say an incident is created or commented on, then we make a REST-based web service call to the JIRA instance to communicate that action. The integration allows for an optional mid-server in the configuration should the JIRA endpoints be behind your firewall. If we are integrating with an on-premise JIRA instance, we recommend you configure the JIRA workflows to send SOAP web service calls directly to ServiceNow through the inbound JIRA web service import set. This web service endpoint will apply the JIRA data to a transform map where it will be transformed into the corresponding incident data inside of ServiceNow. In the situation where we are dealing with a hosted JIRA instance, we have a scheduled job that makes a REST call for issue updates on a configurable periodic basis. When it finds changes, it will send those changes to both transform maps for incidents and comments. Let's cover how you go about setting up and configuring the ServiceNow integration with JIRA. When you install the JIRA POC update set, a new application will be created in the navigation pane inside your ServiceNow instance. This application contains modules that help you set up the integration, monitor the integration activities, and adjust the integration to fit your own needs. When configuring the integration, you will first click on the settings link inside of the configuration section of the application. You will then be provided a list of settings that allow you to turn the integration on or off, or enter JIRA endpoint, project, and credential information. Also, if you're going to be using a mid-server to connect to the JIRA instance, you can specify the mid-server information here as well. For those customers that are integrating with a hosted JIRA instance, the last section of the settings page allows you to configure how often ServiceNow should pull data from JIRA. Should you be sending web service calls directly to ServiceNow from JIRA on given events, you can configure the mapping and transformation of the JIRA data within the inbound JIRA web service module. This module contains settings for the web service as well as the mapping and transform rules. If you need to customize or change the default behavior of the integration, you have easy access to the scripts, libraries, and Rust calls that are used in the integration itself. With the diagnostic section of the application, you can watch the logs coming through specific to the integration. You can view any mid-server communications through the ECC queue, or you can also view incoming JIRA comment data should you be pulling JIRA for comments. Thank you for joining me on this demonstration of the bidirectional proof of concept REST-based integration between ServiceNow and JIRA.